in this la in this last section of chapter four, dealing with fractions, uh, we want to talk about area and volume. Okay. Now I know some of you have had your mind blown before. We're going to see if we can do that again. What we want to look at is we want to talk about the area of a triangle. Now, a lot of you may already know what the area is for the triangle or the formula for it. But my question to you is, do you know why? If I have a triangle, and we're going to talk about particular characteristics about this, where you have the base, and then you have the height right here. How do we find the area of this? Well, if we kind of create a, an extension of this, if we create a, a double image of this guy, like this, where it has the same base and the same height as this guy. What have I created? What is the shape that you see here? For this whole guy, this is a what? It's a parallelogram, right? So what I remember is that the area for a parallelogram was equal to the base times the height. Do you all agree? But this triangle only takes up how much of that whole area? What is the area for this triangle right here, the one that's in black? Is it the whole area? It's just half of it, right? So that's why when we talk about the area for a triangle, The area for a triangle is not base times the height, but it's, it's half of that. Because it's half of this parallelogram. Can you guys see that? Now remember the height is always going to be the distance from the top, ver uh, the top vertex down to the base. Sometimes that's inside the triangle, sometimes it's outside. So we're going to look at a few examples of this and we're going to come up with the area for a triangle. So if I were to simply draw this triangle, <laughs> and I said that the base here is 10 inches and the height is 7 inches, could you find the area? You should be able to. I just gave you the formula, right? So the area is half of the base times the height. Now here's something I want you to understand here. This is all multiplication. All of this stuff is connected. The order doesn't matter since we're multiplying here. So I have one half, which is always going to be there, times what's the base? Ten, Ten times the height, which is seven. So the order doesn't matter in terms of how you multiply this, but you've got to be very careful because sometimes students do really <coughs> bad things and they distribute where there's no distributing possible. See, I would look at this and go, I've got a denominator of two, right? And I can look at these guys as fractions. And I'm going, this is all connected. Is there a way that I can reduce this so I don't have to get large numbers? How can I reduce this? Can the 2 go into anything in the numerator? Ten. 2 can go into 10. So 2 goes in here once. 2 goes into 10 five times. So what do I have here in the numerator? 5 times 7 is just 35, right? What's in the denominator? Do I need that 1 there? No, if 1 is the denominator, you don't need that. So this is really just what? 35, but pay attention to the units. What are the units that I'm dealing with here since this is area? Inches. Square inches. It's going to be square inches, right? So we're going to write inches squared, so square inches. Now that's not the only way for us to do the problem. You also could have said that it's one half, if you want to do it like this, base times the height first, you can, 
but it doesn't really matter. So if you say 1 half times the base, which is 10, times the height, which is 7, then you end up with half of 70. And what's half of 70? That still gives you 35. So we're going to have 35 square inches. Do you all agree with that? It's just a simple little formula for you to know. So you have to make sure you know how to uh, apply that and when to apply it. Okay, let me give you another example. If I have this triangle. Now, what we do here with a triangle like this is that you'll see almost an extension here, an extension of the base. That way you can see what the height is going to be. So if I say the height here is nine-fourths meters, and the base, now here's something you need to understand about the base. The base is the base of the triangle, of the figure itself. So that's only what that will only measure from here to here. We extend the base with this little dashed line so you can see what is the height. And we said the height is from the vertex down to being perpendicular with the base. So the height here is given as 9 fourths meters. And suppose the base is equal to 8 thirds meters. What is the area for this triangle? Can you figure that out? What's the formula for the area? It's what? Base times height is the area for a parallelogram or for a rectangle. But for a triangle, a triangle is only half of that. So it's half of the base times the height. Now what I would do here is I would just go ahead and put everything in the formula. So you have the one half times what? Times eight thirds times the height, which is nine fourths. You can multiply all of the numerators and then multiply all of the denominators, but I don't want to do that because there might be simplifying to do before I get to the large numbers. So how can I reduce any of this? So you're saying that the 2 reduces with the 8, so I get a 1 and 4. Is there anything else that reduces? 3 and 9 reduce, so you get what? 1 and 3. Anything else? The 4s reduce, so that's nice. They reduce to give me what? So that means my area is what? It's just 3. 3 what though? So we would read this as 3 square meters, right? What do you guys think about that? You know the formula, you plug in what you have, and then you reduce. If you had not reduced all of this, just so that you guys know that math works so wonderfully. <coughs> if I multiply 1 times 8 times 9, I get 72. 2 times 3 times 4 is what? 24. It's 24. And if you have 72 over 24, this might make a lot of you just freeze up. That's why I want you to reduce, if you can, before you multiply. But 72 divided by 24 does equal 3. So you see, even if you do it this way, you still get the same answer. <coughs>